Hi, my name is Kim Grant and I'm a landscape photographer from Scotland. I've been doing landscape photography now for about 11 and a half years and I have to say it came quite naturally to me in many ways. I was very outdoorsy as a child. I always spent my life out and about in nature, going on camping holidays, out walking, out on my bike, all that kind of stuff. I just loved being outdoors. And when I was a teenager I got really involved or I really enjoyed like arts and crafts at school as well as sort of designing things on the computer and it became I suppose it was a bit of a natural progression for me to then buy a camera at the age of 16 and start to put both of those passions together, you know, my passion for being out and about in nature and my passion for creativity. Landscape photography seemed to fit both of those passions and it was quite a natural for me, I think, like I say, to get my camera and to begin the journey. Like, I think, the majority of people who end up becoming professional landscape photographers, landscape photography was a hobby for me. It was literally, in the beginning, a way of me you know, connecting more deeply with nature. When I was out and about doing the things I'd normally be doing, it was a way of me documenting what I was up to, taking photos of what I was up to so I could remember that beautiful sunset or that beautiful scene before me. And it kind of grew from there. I never, if I'm honest, I never ever thought I'd be able to have a career in landscape photography. It never really crossed my mind. I always knew that it would be a dream of mine because I knew I loved being outdoors so much and I really enjoyed being behind the camera and connecting with nature through this creative realm that photography offered me. But I never thought I'd be able to make it as a professional. And as a result, I went to, to university when I left school and studied nursing. And it was just when I wasn't you know, studying or working I would be out with my camera as much as possible. I completely taught myself photography. I've not done any professional courses or I never went to college or university to do photography specifically. I just completely taught myself how to do photography through a mix of YouTube videos, magazines and books. I think it would be good to mention here that there really is no right or wrong way to get into photography. You know, whether you go to college and do a specific course or whether, like me, you learn yourself through all the mediums that are available nowadays, both online and in writing. Like any creative genre, finding something that speaks to you, a passion that you enjoy, and then finding a way to learn how to do it yourself can be a great way to start and a great way to progress in a new creative journey that really feeds your soul. I was kind of a few years into my nursing career when I just thought, I, I just want to be outdoors. I remember I worked on a ward at the top level of the hospital and we used to have this stunning view over the mountains. And I just used to, every morning when I saw the sun rising, I just used to think, I wish I was out there, outdoors exploring with my camera. And I sort of realised that I just had to try and find myself a job outdoors and I believed, I genuinely believed the only way I could get a job outdoors was if I was to work in conservation, you know, become a warden or some sort of conservation officer and as a result I went back to college and started studying environmental science. But I only lasted a year because I'd already done the whole university studying thing and I didn't really want to do it again. And I then began volunteering with loads of conservation charities to try and get work experience and internships and stuff which I thought would lead to a career in the outdoors. But it was incredibly tricky, it's such a competitive field. And because I was doing photography all these years, it was funny, it was always like in the back of my mind, I knew that's what I wanted to do, but I never knew, I never knew how to do it. And the break for me came in my photography that allowed me to become a professional was three years ago now, I set up a YouTube channel where I would film myself going around Scotland doing photography, vlog about my adventures and learn more about photography through doing that, through meeting other photographers and all the rest of it. And a year into YouTube, I was able to set up my own business and now I get the privilege of still travelling around Scotland doing all the things I used to love doing only I get to do them more often I still get to share them with people but I also get to make money from it and since becoming a professional I've been able to do work with tourism companies I've been able to take people out on workshops and it's just been a real real joy and a real real privilege but I genuinely never thought I'd get to this stage I didn't think it was possible 
to have a full-time career in landscape photography but it's happened for me and if I'm honest I've never ever been happier. Before I get on to the more tutorial side of this video, I just thought it would be important to mention to anyone out there who's considering becoming a landscape photographer, you have to ensure that you enjoy being out in nature because it's an like incredibly predictable genre of photography. You know, unlike a lot of other genres of photography, especially those done indoors, you can completely control the light that you use through artificial lights um, to create the photographs that you want to portray. But when you're out and about in nature, you have very little control. You can't control the weather, you can't control the light and it takes a lot of hard work and effort, a lot of travelling, a lot of long days to go home with images that you can be really really happy with and often more times than not you go home disappointed so you really have to enjoy being out in nature immersing yourself in the elements if you want to make it as a landscape photographer but in my opinion it's a hundred percent worth it the experiences and the adventures that you can go on with your camera when you do landscape photography even if the photography isn't what you'd hoped it would be you'll never forget those experiences and, and the memories you make and for me that's what makes being out in nature with my camera 100 percent worth it So now that you know a little bit more about me, I thought it would be exciting to take you out on a shoot with me in the Scottish Highlands so I could talk you through some of the things that I look for when it comes to deciding what to take photographs of when I'm in the landscape. What I thought would be quite exciting for this video is for me to come out on location this morning and take you all with me and basically talk you through what I look for in a landscape in terms of deciding what photographs to take and also trying to find compositional opportunities. So that's exactly what I'm going to do this morning and I think it's a really good way of teaching you exactly what somebody like myself would do when we're out in the field and hopefully next time you're out with your camera it'll make you think of new and exciting sort of compositional opportunities and open your eyes up to the different opportunities that can present themselves to you out in the landscape when you're on location. Now this morning I'm on the beautiful west coast of Scotland. I'm just north of the town of Gairloch and this morning I've got a mixture of these, this rocky outcrop here as well as a beach that's just hidden behind me there. So that's basically all I've got to work with this morning. There's some beautiful mountains in the distance that will act as nice features in the image as well. But on the whole I've got a very small area to work with but in many ways that's better because it can showcase to you just how many opportunities there are in the landscape and how I'm going to go about finding them. Before I do that, I thought it'd be nice to sit down and talk you through some of the camera gear that I use for my photography. Now, I've always been a Nikon girl. My first ever camera was a Nikon D3200, which at the time was their entry-level DSLR. Now, if you're thinking of getting into landscape photography or any type of photography, I always recommend to people, if you've never done much photography before, to get the entry-level camera. Because what that does is it allows you to work on your photography. It allows you to learn things like settings and composition and it also allows you and gives you the opportunity to see whether photography is for you before progressing to a more advanced camera which will obviously cost you more money. Now I used the Nikon D3200 for about four years as I was learning the basics of photography and after that time I wanted something that did, had a little bit more punch to it, it was a little bit better quality and I upgraded to the Nikon D7100 which at the time was their advanced level DSLR, their advanced level crop sensor DSLR and I I used that camera for seven, eight years. I absolutely loved it. It did a lot of the things I wanted it to do and I had just fantastic memories with it. And at the start of this year, I was incredibly fortunate to become a Nikon Z creator. And as a result of that, I now shoot with this camera here, which is a Nikon Z6 camera. Now this has got a full frame sensor and it's also a mirrorless camera. It's got you know very good modern advanced technology in it and the experience of using this since the start of the year has been incredible. So this is the camera I've been using since the start of this year, the Z6, and it's what I'm going to be using today. So let's get out, let's look for some composition opportunities and see what we can find.
when I arrive on location, the first thing I tend to do is look around me. Look around for those more grand vista type shots. Now, the grand vista shots are like these ones behind me just now, where we've got these beautiful iconic mountains, the sea between us and these rocky outcrops. Now, grand vista shots are what you'd probably class as your stereotypical landscape photography photographs. I have to be honest though and say that these aren't often the shots that I will end up taking. But when you're beginning in photography and you're just starting to adapt your eye to landscape photography and the scene around you, they're a really good place to start because they're often the photographs that you see regularly, those iconic shots for instance, but because they're iconic and because they're photographed a lot, that's why I don't personally tend to photograph them. But if you're beginning in landscape photography, they're a really, really good place to start and they're well photographed and iconic for a reason. So look for those grand vistas to begin with before honing in further. And I'm gonna show you after I take this shot here, what I mean by honing in further to find that more unique image. Their photographs, like the ones I've just taken and showcased, are popular for a reason. You say showcase beautiful scenery, especially when you're in a location like I am this morning. They're easily accessible and they're, like I say, often where a lot of people will start photography. But they can also work incredibly well, even if you've been doing photography for years, especially if you get stunning light. Now this morning we haven't got stunning light because it's a quite a clear morning, a very crisp morning, which can be really, really nice but uh, there's not much colour in the sky, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's still beautiful nevertheless, and it's still a nice image to capture. So that is where I begin. I begin by looking at the obvious photographs, the grand vistas. I often bypass this stage, but I'm showcasing it to you this morning because I wanted to, to show you a really good place to start. And next we're gonna go on to the sort of photographs that I personally end up taking, the ones where you look more intimately at the landscape and pick out objects and subjects in the landscape to make your images a little bit more interesting. I'm going to show you how I do that just now. Now that we've got the obvious grand vista style photographs out the way, I wanted to talk to you all about the use of telephoto lenses for landscape photography. Now when I started landscape photography I never considered a telephoto lens to do it with. I had a telephoto lens but I only ever used it for wildlife photography. But I've learned over the years that using one of these lenses is a fantastic way to create something unique and interesting in your photographs. Now a lot of people when they start photography they will get a lens that's you know a wide angle lens with a bit of a zoom and often people will then buy a telephoto lens which like I say they will often use for things like sports photography, wildlife photography, all that kind of stuff. But it works so well in landscape photography because sometimes you can be in a location and there is so much going on that it can overwhelm you. But a lens like this will allow you to zoom in and pick out some details in the landscape and eliminate a lot of distractions from your photographs. This can work incredibly well in woodland, for instance. You might have all these trees around you and not know what to shoot. Then you might find this opening in the woodland with a nice tree in the middle of it. Zoom in, take a photograph, a great opportunity. But equally here at the coast, which is where I shoot the majority of the time, telephoto lenses can come in very handy because you can zoom into rocks in the sea, boats in the sea that are on the horizon, and other aspects of the landscape. And obviously this morning we've got the iconic mountains in the distance as well. And if I'd had some beautiful light hitting them, I might want to zoom in and take a shot. So I'm going to get my camera set up just now and look for some interesting compositions in this landscape that I can capture with this telephoto lens to show you how using something like this can create sometimes more interest in your images.
some examples of some things I've managed to use a telephoto lens for here. You probably can't see, but behind me there is, no, you can't see, but there's some trees on top of this hill, some lone trees, and one of them is being framed nicely between two telegraph poles, and I think it makes a really nice silhouette image. So I zoomed in and took the shot. And equally nice, over the sea there, there's a peninsula that sticks out with a white house on it. And behind the house is a mountain with the mountain peak. And the peak is sticking out of this sort of cloud inversion. So again, I've zoomed in and taken that shot there. So that's just one other way other than Grand Vista shots that you can utilise landscapes and as I said to you in my introduction, you really have to enjoy being out in nature and being outdoors if you want to be a landscape photographer and I think part of the beauty of being a landscape photographer is that you notice things in the landscape that the majority of people would just walk by and having a telephoto lens means you can zoom into those more intricate parts of the landscape, the bits that really stick out to you and photograph them and show case them while eliminating all the distractions and that that are going on around you the things that everybody else notices you can really pinpoint those interesting parts of the landscape and create something more intricate more intimate and in many ways more detailed Now that I've spoken you through the grand vistas as well as zooming in with your telephoto lens and getting those really intricate details in the landscape, I'm now going to show to you the type of landscape photography that I actually do the majority of the time and that is looking for really interesting foreground interest within the landscape. Now the reason I do this is because we all view the world from eye height so the majority of people will be walking around in landscapes just viewing the world like I say from one level. And grand vistas therefore are an easy thing for people to pick out in the landscape when they start photography because generally speaking you take those shots from eye level whether that's handheld or on a tripod and providing you know where to put your horizon and, and to read the light and how to frame your, your shot itself you know, grand vistas can be a really good place to start and a really nice way to do landscape photography. Equally, if you're walking around with a telephoto lens, you tend to be hand holding it and again shooting from eye level. But when you get low to the ground, like I am just now, you see the world from a completely different angle. You know, it's not often people get down on the ground and sort of crawl around and, and look at the world from different viewpoints. But getting down low means you can include so much more in your frame. You can include really interesting foreground interest in the situation I'm photographing just now, I've got these beautiful leading lines leading through this rock face and into the grand vista scene that I shot earlier, but we've got this interesting foreground this time instead. This photograph doesn't work incredibly well because there's some annoying, you know, rocks and distracting elements on the left hand side of the frame, but this is a good example of how finding foreground interest can just add something different to your photography. So it's always a tip that I try to teach people is when you're out with your camera doing landscapes, try and see the world from a different angle. Because as we all see the world from eye level, often these photographs can sometimes come across as a little bit snapshotty. But if you're out and about and you're you know, changing the level of your body, the level of your tripod, and photographing different parts of the landscape from these different angles and these different levels, like I say, you'll open up so much more compositions, so much more opportunities. And that's when you come home with those interesting and different images. This style of landscape photography is also great in many ways because it allows you to really connect with the earth. That may sound quite spiritual, but I think if you love being outdoors and you love photographing landscapes, 
actually sitting on the ground and really immersing yourself in that landscape, wherever you may be, it's a great way to connect with it. And I think if you can really connect with your landscape, you can then often get better photographs because you're fully immersed in it. All of your senses are in that landscape. You know, right now I'm seeing these beautiful scenes, I'm hearing the waves behind me, I can smell the sort of wet dew in the morning i can feel it now as well and uh, the only thing i can't do right now is taste anything but you know the majority of your senses are involved in that photograph which really allows you to connect with it and hopefully allows you to take better images because you are fully immersed in the scene Now from the west coast of Scotland to the east coast you're getting a full coast to coast tour in this video today. One thing I thought would be really nice to finish this video off is now that you know what I look for for potential photo opportunities when I'm out in the field I thought it would be nice to end this video by talking you through also how I plan my shoots in terms of deciding where I'm going to go and why I'm going to go there. Now I always like to advocate that you can get good photographs at any time of the day, especially if you get good light or if you know how to adapt the light that is presented to you when you get to location. But there are a few things you need to consider when you're deciding where to go with your camera and what time of day to go there too. If you're new to landscape photography, going out during the day is a great thing to do because the more time you spend out with your camera, the more you're going to learn. Also during the day is a great time to practice your photographic compositions and play around with your camera settings and it's also a fantastic time to get out and scout for potential photographic locations. Because like anything in life, the more planning you put into something, the better the results are going to be. And the same thing goes for landscape photography. However, if you really want to succeed in landscape photography, and especially if you want to become a professional, you've got to try and find that drive and determination to get out at the optimum times of day. Now, what do I mean by optimum times of day? What I mean by this is often a sunrise or sunset can give you the best light for landscape photography, or if you're out during the day in stormy conditions. However, getting out of bed early in the morning and staying out in the evening is very challenging for many. But if you want that good light for your photographs, you've got a much better chance of getting them at these times of day. Like all the genres of photography, you will hear people say that light is everything when it comes to taking a photograph. Now if you're shooting in a studio, you'll want good light so that your subject matter is illuminated and visible within your photograph. Well the same goes when you're out and about doing landscape photography. The only difference is that you have very little to no control over the light when you're outdoors and you have to work with what weather and nature wants to do. However, if you're prepared to get up early in the morning for sunrise or stay out late for sunset, you maximise your chances of getting optimum light and intense light and therefore you maximise your chances of getting those really dramatic and atmospheric shots which ultimately people want when they go out with their cameras. There are also certain locations that are a lot more likely to give you dramatic light than others. For instance, here in Scotland, the west coast gets more rain and more storms than here on the east coast. You're therefore far more likely to get dramatic light during the day on the west coast, which means you can potentially go home with good images no matter what time of day it is. However, here on the east coast we tend to get much more settled weather and because we get less cloud and rain here, you're likely to get more breaks and therefore you're likely to get more interesting sunrises and sunsets than the west coast. But then the west coast gives you that drama 
So deciding where you go, what locations you shoot and understanding how the weather patterns work in that region will help you decide what days to shoot and where to go depending on what feel you're wanting to portray in your images. Therefore, in landscape photography, it's not only important to consider what you're going to photograph when you get to location, it's also really important to decide where you're going to go and what time of day you're going to go there. The tricky thing in this field of photography is realising that no matter how many weather apps you look at and no matter how much planning you put into a shoot, you are never guaranteed to get the light that you hope to get. However, landscape photography, as mentioned before, is an experience. It's all about getting out there and enjoying the landscape and adapting to what happens. But to increase your chances, really consider what location you're going to, what time of day you're going there, and the story you want to portray in your photographs, which will ultimately maximise your chances of getting the light you want and getting those epic photographs. Now let's go back to Kim on the west coast to do a quick round up of what she looks for again when she's on location just so you've got something to recap on and think about before you grab your camera and head outdoors. I hope this video has helped you in some way. I hope it's made you think more now next time you go out with your camera about different opportunities that are available in the landscape. You know, when you first arrive at a location, look at those grand vistas, fully immerse yourself in the scene, pick out parts of the landscape that really speak to you and it's a really good starting point. If you have a telephoto lens, get it out and start picking out more intricate and detailed parts of the landscape. And by doing that, you will begin to see things in the landscape that you may be hadn't before which will allow you in the future to pick out more interesting compositions because you can tune your eye in further to what's going on around you and pick out that details in the landscape which the majority of people miss and then when you get more involved in landscape photography or you can start from today if you're even if you're brand new start getting low to the ground and start looking for different vantage points see the world from different levels different heights and start picking out parts of the landscape that you often don't see. You know, sit down on the rocks, sit down on the beach, climb up mountains, climb up hills, whatever it is you enjoy doing outdoors, find what works for you. But trying different levels, looking for that interest in the foreground, leading lines and all the rest of it is where your photographs will become more unique and interesting and you'll just get something that little bit different. I just want to say a huge thank you for watching this. I hope you've learned something today and I really appreciate you coming along on this early morning shoot with me this morning as I showcase my sort of thought process that goes through my head when I arrive at a location and the compositions that I try and pick out in that situation. I wish you all the best in your photography journeys. I hope you've been inspired today to get out with your camera and I hope that wherever you end up, it'll be the weather will be nice for you, the light will play ball and you'll have a really enjoyable time. Thank you.